Welcome to Jerusalem. Today, we're standing right here at the Western Wall, or as it's known in Hebrew, the Kotel. This is the holiest place in the world for Jews, and it holds so much history, spirituality, and emotion within its stones. Now, let's get into what makes this place so special. The Western Wall is part of the large structure surrounding the Jewish temple that existed here. The first temple was built by King Solomon, son of King David, over 3,000 years ago, and it was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BC. The second temple was later expanded by Herod. The wall we see today isn't part of the temple itself, but the outer wall built around 20 BC to support the platform where the temple once stood. Over the past 3,500 years, the Jewish people have had to face many invasions by different peoples and empires, including the Egyptians, Philistines, Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, the Roman Empire, Byzantines, Muslims, Crusaders, Mamluks, Ottomans, and the British. However, these invaders were never able to erase the deep connection of the Jewish people to their homeland, particularly to this very special place. Before 1967, this area looked very different, it was a neighborhood called the Mugrabi Quarter, cleared after the Six-Day War. Getting closer to the wall, you'll notice it's divided into two sections, one for men and one for women. This is because the Kotel functions like an open-air synagogue, following Jewish traditions. On Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, you can see Torah reading ceremonies, and many families celebrate bar mitzvahs here. The Israeli military also holds official events, like police and army graduations, in this square. As we approach the wall itself, you'll see the different layers of history. The first seven rows of stones are from Herod's time, around 19 BCE. These massive blocks, called Herdian ashlars, fit so precisely that you can't even slide paper between them. Above them are stones from the Umayyad Caliphate, built after the Muslim conquest in 638 CE. And higher up, stones from the Ottoman Empire, which ruled here until 1917. And in the very top of the wall, three courses added before 1967 by the Sunni Muslim cleric in charge of Jerusalem's Islamic holy places. What many people don't realize is that the wall extends much farther than what's visible, it's nearly half a kilometer long. and 17 courses of Herdi and Ashla still buried below where we are standing. If you look up above the wall, you'll see the Temple Mount, also known as Mount Moriah. It's home to two of Islam's holiest sites, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. It is important to highlight some historical facts based on numerous archaeological findings and studies. The two Islamic buildings on this site were constructed in the 7th century, Built on the same location where the Jewish temple once stood, it remains the most sacred place for Jews today. The Muslim narrative is that it was here, at this site, where Muhammad ascended to heaven to negotiate with Allah the number of daily prayers. According to the Quran, on the night of the Isra and Emiraj, Muhammad traveled on the winged creature Burak to the farthest mosque. However, the issue with this story is that when Muhammad recounted it, Jerusalem was still under Byzantine control, and no mosque existed at the time. Muhammad never said the location was Jerusalem. In fact, Jerusalem is not mentioned even once in the Quran, whereas in the Jewish Bible, it is mentioned 699 times. During the time of the Crusades, Christians also claimed this site as a sacred place and built palaces and churches here. In fact, if you look at the facade of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, it is actually part of the Crusader church that existed here in the 12th century. The niches on the facade likely displayed images of saints and the four evangelists, and the arches are always represented in multiples of three, symbolizing the Christian trinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It seems that the monotheistic religions, which were established centuries after Judaism, attempt to rewrite history and lay claim to the legitimate heritage of the Jewish people. In some parts of here you can still see the original bedrock of Mount Moriah. Many first-time visitors to the Western Wall have common questions. One of the most frequently asked is why some Jewish people sway when they pray. There are several explanations, but the most accepted one is that the prayer is so intense that it involves the entire body. 
Another important point to clarify is that Jews do not pray to the wall, they pray to God. The reason why they choose this place is that it is the closest accessible point to the Holy of Holies, which was located inside the Jewish temple on the Temple Mount. A final curiosity is about the notes placed between the stones of the wall. These are prayers or names of people seeking a blessing, as this sacred place is near God's presence. The notes are collected periodically to make room for new ones, and those removed are not discarded, they are respectfully buried on the Mount of Olives. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to the channel. And while everyone is welcome to ask, consider becoming a member to help us continue producing content and get priority for responses. I hope that one day soon, you'll be able to visit this incredible and special place yourself.